Let me ask you a question. If you could spend 100% of your life working on things that you find meaningful, surrounded by people that you love and admire, and you were paid well for the work that you did, would you say you were living a fulfilled life? So, yeah, whenever I start talking about entrepreneurial minimalism, I get a lot of questions. People asking, you know, what is it? How is it, is it, how is it different from solopreneurship or say traditional entrepreneurship? Uh, and so I thought I would just share a story with you that will help illustrate exactly what I mean when I talk about entrepreneurial minimalism. Uh, this Thanksgiving, I was in Northern California and we were visiting my wife's family and, and my brother-in-law every year ha puts on a, a massive festival in San Francisco called Sketchfest. It's a big sketch comedy festival. Tons of people come out, lots of really big name celebrities and comedians are all part of the event. And it always happens in January. So whenever we see him over the holidays, especially Thanksgiving, he's very busy prepping for the event, getting everything ready to go. Um, and one night we were sitting out by the fire and a little bonfire in the backyard, as you do in Northern California on a chilly evening. And I was just chatting with him about it. I said, how's it going? How are ticket sales? And he said, oh man, it's going great. This may be the biggest one we've ever done. Ticket sales are up. Some of the stuff that we've got is almost sold out. And I said, well, how much does a ticket typically cost? And he said, well, we, we try and keep the ticket prices as low as we can. He said, they're typically between $25 and $35. But, you know, if we get a bigger name celebrity who's doing something, we have to charge a little bit more because we got to pay him a little bit more. And I said, oh, that makes sense. And then I said, uh, well, do you, again, I'm just, I'm just inquisitive, right? I said, well, how do you, do you like ratchet up the ticket price as stuff starts to get closer to sell? Do you incentivize people by offering discounts at the beginning and then ratcheting it up like I've seen a lot of these other big conferences do? And he said, he said, no, I, he said, I, I suppose we could probably do something like that to, to maximize a little better the value and how much money we were able to make. But he said, I, the people who show up to Sketchfest are really passionate about sketch comedy. Like they love it. This is the biggest and really, I think it was the only big sketch comedy festival that they have in the United States. And he said, I just want people to be able to see as much of it as they can. And so the lower I can keep the ticket prices, the more they can experience what we're putting on. And he said, this is my 20th year doing this comedy festival. It's my job, it's all I do. He said, I work four months out of the year, um, I get to surround myself with people who all love the same thing as me, who are all super passionate about the same stuff that I'm passionate about. And he said, I've been able to generate a very comfortable six-figure uh, livelihood, six-figure income doing this. And I thought, man, that's the dream. That's it. That's, that's entrepreneurial minimalism. See, it, it's, it's not about no, not having any employees. It's, it's not about you know, uh, keeping your overhead low or anything like that. Those are, those can be parts of it. But really at the end of the day, I think what all of us are looking for is we're looking for a, a fulfilled life. We want to live a life of fulfillment. And what does it mean to do that? What creates a fulfilled life? And when I ask that question, well, let me ask it a different way. Let me ask you a question. If you could spend 100% of your life working on things that you find meaningful, surrounded by people that you love and admire, and you were paid well for the work that you did, would you say you were living a fulfilled life? And see, I think that's the secret. See, I think that's, that's what creates happy lives. It's doing work that we find fulfilling, not doing nothing, but doing work that you find fulfilling, meaningful, that you're excited to get up and go do. Doing it with people who all love the same thing that you love, who are all just as passionate about those things as you are. And then being able to make enough money doing that, that you can enjoy the other parts of your life. And the question is, how do we create that? And the answer is, we, I know how we don't create it. We don't create it by focusing exclusively on how do we grow or scale as fast as possible. See, that's what everybody says and everybody talks about. It's like, well, I'm gonna teach you how to scale your business. I'm gonna teach you how to grow to $100,000 a year in revenue or a million dollars a year. But nobody tells you what the trade-off for that is. Nobody tells you that if you want that life or if you wanna build this massive company that you're gonna to have to exchange your time and your freedom for it. 
And as much as people say that you can go out, no, you can hire people to do the work. And if you hire them right, then you can just be managing it. You can create this, you know, this cash flow business for yourself that doesn't require any time. The reality is that doesn't ever happen. Everyone that I have ever known who has built a business like that has built a prison for themselves. And instead of waking up every day excited about what they get to go do, they wake up and go to feed the machine. They go to show up because they have 50000 a 100000 a million dollars a month in overhead that has to be paid for. And instead of working on the things that they're truly passionate about, the things that they might have started the business to do, instead of doing that, now they're putting out fires. They're going from one fire to another fire to another fire. Because even if they hire right, even if they hire the right people, all they've really done is solve the small problems. Elon Musk said this a while back, and it's, it begs repeating. He said, you know, the difficulty in running a company, even if you hire really smart people, is that they solve all the easy problems. He said, so what you're left with all day are all the really serious problems that a lot of really smart people couldn't figure out how to solve. And if you started your business, if you, if you started business because you are passionate about what you did, whether that's being an artist or, or whether it's being a teacher or whether it's being an auto mechanic or whatever it is, if you started that business because you were passionate about the work that you were doing, it's very, very easy if you're not careful to build yourself a prison rather than a business that's gonna set you free. And I figured this out for myself way, way back in, well, back in 2018 when my first company fell apart and, and I realized that I had followed the prescription that everyone had laid out for me and I had built this big company and I'd hired a lot of really smart people, very good people to help me run it. And at the end of the day, I was terribly unhappy and I said, what do I got to do to make sure that this business, the next business that I start, doesn't end up the same way? How do I find a business that allows me to work exclusively on the things that I love and gives me the freedom and the flexibility to work from anywhere on earth? It's very what I call scalable and flexible. Um, something that has income mobility, meaning I can take it with me and go somewhere else if I want to travel or spend times in other parts of the world. How do I do those things and still be able to make enough money to live comfortably? And that's where I came up with this philosophy called entrepreneurial minimalism. And it's just a simple philosophy that puts time freedom and income mobility ahead of growth. It says in any decision we're going to make, for example, with my, with my brother-in-law and this pricing. How, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna price this? Hey, if we doubled the price of our tickets, could we increase revenue by 20%? Yeah, we could, but then a lot of people that we love seeing and who would normally come and get exposure and enjoy this thing that we're building don't get that opportunity. And could I work maybe six or eight or 10 months out of the year and grow it even bigger and next year we've got 10 times as many people coming and 10 times as many guests and stuff like that. He's like, Probably, probably could do that. But I'd be sacrificing the free time that I have to do the other things that I enjoy and to spend time with the other people that are meaningful and important to me in my life. And in our lives, I think far too often, we put off living today for some future date when we think things will be perfect. I call it the happily ever after syndrome. This idea that Someday in the future, when I'm making enough money or when I've got enough free time or when the kids are out of school, then it'll be my time. Then I'll have the time and energy to focus on this other thing. And until then, I'm going to live my life unhappy, doing work I don't enjoy with people that I don't you know, particularly like so that I can eventually get to a point where things are good. The problem is there is no such thing as happily ever after. There's no point in the future where you're just suddenly going to arrive and now things are going to be good. Life's a series of peaks and valleys. Sometimes you're on top of the mountain, sometimes you're in the valley. And unfortunately, sometimes the times in the valley last a lot longer than we want. And the times on the mountain, well, they're a little shorter than we hoped. The important thing to realize is that you never stay in one place or the other unless you choose to that eventually we come out of the valley, that the darkness turns to light, that winter turns to spring, and so on. Your job is to understand that your life is being lived now and every second that you squander trying to build a business that you say, well, once we're doing a million dollars a year in revenue, well, then I can take my foot off the gas. Nope, that ain't the way it works. 
or as soon as the kids are out of college and I can finally have time to focus on, or once the kids are off to college, I finally have time to focus on building that business I always wanted. Except that ain't the way it works. Once I'm retired, then I'll do it. How many people do I know? Once I've retired, then I'll be able to go and do these things that I enjoy, like learn to play guitar or hike Mount Kilimanjaro. How many times does it happen? Almost never. And so the concept of entrepreneurial minimalism is the philosophy that says my life is being lived today and the business should support and fund the life I want to have, not consume my life and that I shouldn't be delaying until tomorrow the life I want to have today. And that's a radically different concept than anybody else wants to talk about. Everybody else wants to sell you on, I'm going to show you how to make millions of dollars. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, millions of dollars will give you a very comfortable life, but it will not leave you fulfilled. And what you should be doing, what I believe, after working with thousands of entrepreneurs and seeing countless numbers of them go through exactly the same thing I went through with my business, is that entrepreneurial minimalism is the right choice for 90% of people in business. And if you are thinking about starting a business or, or you already have one and what I've said to you sounds appealing, then I would ask you to at least explore the concept coming down, listen to the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel or follow me on X or on LinkedIn because I post about this stuff all the time. Uh, this is the way. It's the very best way. And everybody who has applied the principles of entrepreneurial minimalism to their business has loved the results. And so I would encourage you to take that step and start working towards building a business like that. And if you would like some help, I'd be happy to help you just reach out. Thanks for listening.